It's good to be with you this morning, and um, I'll be trying to give you an overview of how uh, wind permitting uh, proceeds in the state of Virginia. When you hear the term Department of Environmental Quality, you uh, probably think air, water, and, and waste, which is exactly what most state uh, environmental organizations would regulate. That's equally true in Virginia. DEQ did not become involved in energy until 2009, and the legislation you see mentioned on this slide is the nexus between my department and renewable energy. This statute tells us to do two things. First, to develop permits by rule, and those, as you may know, are a streamlined general permit type of approach. And we're to do this for the construction and operation of small renewable energy projects. But at the same time, it tells us that these permits have to protect natural resources. If you were to ask, well, what is DEQ's policy about renewable energy, I would have to point to our statute and say, we have two goals, as set forth by the statute, to promote renewable energy and to protect natural resources and to keep those in balance. There were a number of industry folks who uh, were instrumental in having this bill passed in 2009, and also a, a number of folks who were associated with the administration, and um, it was actually a, a bill supported by Virginia's governor at that time. The industry felt that this permit by rule approach could give them certainty. They would know what's expected, so they could gauge up front what their financial um, implications would be. A permit by rule has strict time deadlines as to how fast our agency has to give them an answer. And hopefully we're coming up with reasonable, balanced regulatory requirements. At the same time, the chief issues covered by the PBR are ones that are not normally regulated in and of themselves. They end up having regulatory requirements by means of an order, say from the Public Utilities Corporation in a state, or in some other fashion. So those interests need to be provided for also. Our statute has a very unusual, I would say, definition of a small renewable energy project goes up to 100 megawatts. Only in Virginia would that be considered small, I think. And the statute has provision that these renewable media come under DEQ's jurisdiction up to the size of 100 megawatts. Any project over 100 megawatts still goes to the state corporation. And then we have a second category of renewables. And I was at a, speaking at a conference just yesterday in Galax um, about biomass projects. Our statute gives DEQ authority for a maximum of 20 megawatts uh, for these projects. The statute also send, sets forth some very stringent time deadlines. Those of you who are used to regulatory matters know that it takes generally two years minimum to develop a regulation from beginning to end. Well, the General Assembly gave us less than a year and a half to finish the wind regulation, and that was for a brand new program. Uh, both of my colleagues on this panel and a number of others, uh, some of you represented in this room, know how hard we work to get this wind regulation finished. And in fact, we did it by December 22nd, so we were a couple of weeks ahead of time. Both Don and John can tell you that we had really two advisory panels, regulatory advisory panels. You'll hear us talk about the wraps. Um, for the onshore group, we met 15 times all day, and then for the wrap that was looking specifically at the coastal and nearshore issues, we had another seven all-day meetings. But 
I'm very pleased to tell you that we reached consensus on virtually every issue. On the onshore, there was like one and a half uh, points on which we didn't have consensus. Um, so I can't say enough in praise of the, the um, stakeholders who served on our advisory panels. And you'll see the other <coughs> steps in our process uh, culminating in the December 22nd uh, final regulation. We're not through them because as you know with regulations, the next step is for the agency to issue guidance both to our staff and to the public on how these provisions are to be implemented. So we are very heavily into that process now, and uh, even though it's not required for agency guidance, we will be having an informal public comment period on the guidance. Writing guidance, as most of you know, is strictly the province of the regulatory agency. But because wind is a new and in some ways, very controversial topic. We believe that it's important to consider public input. This law replaces the State Corporation Commission's authority over these projects. Like most states, uh, Virginia had a case-by-case -case determination it came before the SEC, which is a quasi-judicial uh, board for a hearing. Uh, there would be live uh, cross-examination. And based on the record, the commissioners would make a ruling for the project. The Highland New Wind Project was the first and only project to go through this system. Um, some people believe that because it took so many years for them to complete the process, that that was perhaps an impetus for the General Assembly to move that authority over to DEQ in a permit by rule approach. In the old system, our sister agencies, who are in charge of the wildlife issues and the historic resources issues and so forth, all would make their comments, they would give them to DEQ, but DEQ was just the stapler and the deliverer. DEQ didn't have any substantive input. And take those over to the State Corporation Commission. In the new system, that doesn't happen. In the new system, all the sister agencies, as well as the other stakeholders, have been working with us in coming up with the regulations <coughs> to state up front what has to be done. There is also a requirement in the statute, however, that before we can approve a, a permit application, we have to consult with these experts from Game and Inland Fisheries, Historic Resources, and so forth. But th there are set requirements that the statute prescribes, and then those are carried over into our regulations and guidance, and if those are fulfilled, then the person gets the permit cover. When the statute was written, the term permit by rule had never been defined in Virginia. It had been used for many years in the solid waste program for things like transfer stations, you know, where you take your recycling. Not a very complex uh, type of operation. Certainly a far cry from the complexities of a wind project. But this was the permitting vehicle that the General Assembly was telling us to use. The difference between our PBR and the PBR for the waste facilities, um, I'll just focus on one of them. When you go to, thank you. When you go to the waste division and ask for a permit by rule, thank you, Alex for your transfer station. Once you have submitted all the 10 things or so that are on the list and DEQ checks you off, if you have a complete application, then you have permit coverage. Because of our statute, <coughs> we're having to consult with the sister agencies. You not only have to be complete, but you also have to be deemed adequate. 
So we have an extra step in there, even though it's a permit by rule. It's not identical to the model that um, you would have assumed from the term permit by rule. As I was saying, the statute sets forth 14 things that every project has to submit for permit by rule coverage. I've underlined some of these because whereas we are just going to accept on its face things like local government certification that the project adheres to land use requirements. We're not going to go behind that. If a professional engineer says, well, the, um, the rated capacity does fit within the standards for the 100 megawatts, we're not going to go behind that and question it. We're just going to check it off. But the things that are underlined here, we probably will need to look behind and evaluate. The two that are in bold are the chief operative provisions for us. They may have implications for the operating plan and the site plan. For instance, if the mitigation plan, if one is required, if it says, okay, we have a TNA species that has some kind of habitat over here on your site, well, the site plan may well require that you put your turbine over here to avoid that. So there may be site plan implications from the mitigation plan. Operating plan, the same thing may apply. Um, if you have to do mitigation for bats and curtailment is part of that mitigation, then we would expect to see that show up in your operating plan. So those are the among the criteria where DEQ has regulatory responsibility to make sure that those things are being done adequately. If anyone asks you what are the chief points of Virginia's renewable energy permit by rule, you can probably say wildlife and historic resources. When the analysis of natural resources is done as required by the statute, we do ask folks to look at a fairly broad array of natural resources because that's what the statute says. And when you get to the next provision, the only two for which we can require a mitigation plan are wildlife and historic resources. And that's only if those initial analyses show that there is likely to be a negative impact. If so, then we require a mitigation plan and the statute calls for, if you have 